Hello buddy, Omni here. I just got back from two movies today. Uh, one, none other than the highly anticipated movie that I've been excited for for quite some time, and that is Shazam. I am glad to say that this movie, I, I haven't heard anybody say anything negative about this film. And to be honest, there's not a lot that I could find that I didn't like. There's a couple of Little nitpicks here and there, but this is a freaking solid movie. DC, this is as as fun as Aquaman was, as good as a character movie as Wonder Woman was. This movie gets all of it. This, where Wonder Woman fails in the third act, but everything else is solid. Where Aquaman succeeds in all the spectacle and the action, but doesn't quite nail it in the character beats and the character emotions. This movie just gets all of it, all of it on point. This is a funny movie. This is a touching, warm, heartfelt movie as well. This story, I found myself tearing up at multiple points in this film. This, this, this movie has so much you I've heard this a lot of people talking about this movie going into it and I definitely get what they're saying. This movie has a lot of heart and a soul. There's so much in this like it it's definitely at its core it is still a superhero film. This is still a movie about a superhero and this universe with other superheroes. This is in the current DCEU. Shazam exists in a world where the previously established heroes of the DCEU do exist. And there's some great interesting like nods to some of those characters and a lot of other stuff that I'm probably I'm definitely not going to spoil. I'm not going to spoil anything about this movie because I want you guys to go check it out and watch it. Um, as far as the pacing, I feel like the only point in the movie where I, I think the pacing was a little weak. And I think that's just right at the beginning when they're establishing um, the be the 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 premise the the world and the rules for the character of Shazam and the wizards and all of that this background of magic um and i feel like that's honestly the the weakest little bit of it it was it felt a little oddly placed a little out of pace and like it uh it it definitely it, it was the most comic book cheese in the entire movie like the you just the dialogue was that's from a comic book <laughs> not a movie and like you can tell it's it the movie has fun with itself it's very self-aware of the superhero genre the comic book genre that it's taking place in it 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 plays with a lot of those tropes with a lot of those expectations in a fun and inventive way and billy batson when he gets these powers and he acts like a kid who gets these powers? He he abuses them at some points. He has fun with them at some points. He doesn't know how to use them until he like builds up and figures things out. He doesn't know what powers he has until he tests them out. And you see this kind of played around with in the trailers with um, his foster brother, Freddy, helping him out, who is a huge superhero nerd. He, he collects and follows up on news stories and stuff like that surrounding the other heroes that do exist in this universe uh, and definitely fanboys. And he's he's essentially the mentor in this film by being the expert on superheroes and helps Billy get his grasp on his powers and his identity. And this uh, B Billy has a very touching story of He's he's trying he hasn't accepted foster homes over this period. He has hope that his parents are are still out there somewhere and that his he's trying to find family. This more so than a superhero film, I have to say this I would say this is a family film. This is about a kid trying to find his place and find home, find a family, find people that care about him and that he cares about and you know, he's been running from this for his entire life. From the moment that he was abandoned, he has been striving for some type of completeness. And that's had him running from foster home, from foster home, being a troubled child. And watching him 
um, embrace his new place with these powers, with his responsibility, with his new family, all in front of this dilemma, this uh, villain that makes his appearance in Dr. Savannah, who I also feel like his, the move, the movie cold opens with his backstory. And like I said, it's a little paced weird. It's definitely the most comic book ish thing that happens in the movie is that beginning. He's what introduces us into this. And it's kind of his obsession with this magic that kind of gets the story moving. And he's great. Like when Mark Strong takes over, great. He's solid at performing. He performs a great role as a villain. You kind of feel for him in a way and like his motivations make sense. He's not, it. he by no means has the depth of a Killmonger or a Thanos or anything like that. But I think with what we've gotten in the DCEU so far, this is easily a villain. You can kind of get his machinations, get his motivations for why he's going forward and taking these drastic actions um, and heinous actions at times. There's a lot of additional nods if you follow any of the DC Universe stuff. Not, not the app, but the DC properties themselves across different mediums. There's, uh, there's some cameos, familiar faces that you might notice if you've been following any of the DC shows, movies, or anything like that in the past 20 years. <laughs> it's a, it's a fun, fun little movie, man. I, I felt myself tearing up so much at many points, and I, I think Zachary Levi's can't, just charisma carries through so good. And he acts like a gigantic child. He acts like a 14 year old in this adult body. He nails every bit of this role. And then as Billy Batson himself, Asher Angel does a solid job at like playing this, this troubled kid just trying to find his place in the world. And then, but when he gets these powers, he, it's so easy for him to like let go of all of that and have fun. And he feels for what I can only imagine is like the first time in his life, he's gotten to feel like a kid again and enjoy something when he's getting these powers, testing them out and playing with them and all that stuff. It's so, it's so spot on that I, I, I don't have all of the right words for it. The, the story progresses at a great pace. They dive deep into the lore for Shazam. Uh, I'm not going to spoil any of it. There's some pretty solid stuff that comes up in this. Um, Freddy and the other orphans all give solid performances. Jack Dylan Glazer does such a great job. If almost right on level with Zachary Levi in this film, man, this, this kid is solid. He was amazing in it. Pretty much all of the kids in it were solid actors. And that's one of the reasons I love that movie so much was because all of those kids, because you always run into an issue with child actors is it's hard. Sometimes it's hard for them to deliver, to give like a believable performance as a kid, because when they read the lines, maybe they don't read them genuinely enough. But these, the kids they got in it and this film are freaking talented. They, if they keep these this up, these kids will all do some amazing stuff in the future. I loved every one of them, and they do not let you down. This woo, is such a great movie and a great, another good, every DC movie since Justice League has been one step closer in the right direction. And this is further evidence that maybe things can turn around. There's still a lot of things in the woodworks and the things that I'm hearing reported that kind of give make me uneasy about what's going on with the, the connected universe. Not the Elseworlds like the Joker film or anything like that. I think that's going to do well on its own. Uh, but the stuff that we know are tied into the DCEU, I'm kind of confused about some of the ideas, things I've heard from Wonder Woman uh, 1984, um, things I've heard about the Suicide Squad movie coming out, which is not a sequel. It's a complete reboot, but using some of the same cast members from the first one. And 
that just begs the question of what are they going to do with the continuity? If the, the, they acknowledge it in this movie, they acknowledged it in Aquaman that the continuity hasn't changed. So I'm curious how that's going to play out in the long run, because I know they wanted the stories to feel uh, compact rather than relying on the greater universe, which is good. And that's working for it. Aquaman didn't have to have people cameoing in his movie to let you know that, other people are out there. This was his movie. That was his journey. This is Shazam's movie. This is Shazam's journey. There's nobody interrupting that and it works. But going forward, I know WB, I talk about this extensively in a video. I talk a, a long video. I ranted about, about the state of the DCEU and how I feel like the upcoming flash movie could easily fix a lot of their continuity problems and allow them to do whatever they want to do going forward with recasts, with retellings, with retcons and stuff. And it all wouldn't contradict the existing story. If you want to check that out, I'll link it at the end of this video. <laughs> I just, I grew up with DC. I love the MCU. They do all this stuff solid. They've done it solid, but they earned it all. They built this slow, gradual thing. And WB has just been with, just trying to milk in and cash in on it in many ways. And that's where they failed. They rushed a product. They rushed this universe way too fast. And it's unfortunately they, they are still going forward. They're not, they're only like backpedaling on certain things like suicide squad. But in the long run, I don't know how they're going to tie all that in expect us to like, just kind of hand wave it away and make we, until we forget about it. Um, which is really curious because like, I like, I love what they're doing with Aquaman. I love what they've done with Shazam. I'm looking forward to the new Wonder Woman, but in the long haul with missteps with, um, BVS with uh, Superman, the things they've had, the, um, drama surrounding their castings with Henry Cavill and with Ben Affleck and, possible recastings due to those same issues. It begs a lot of questions for when they want to meet back because Warner Brothers does want to have one of these other team up movies and build this universe still, but they acknowledge now that they need to kind of take a step back, let it build naturally. But with, with, without being able to repair what they've already done, it's going to create a disconnect eventually. Unless, like I said, unless they just expect to just get as far away from it as possible and just hope we forget it and let the universe itself will forget it. And which for me, I, I, I don't think that's a proper approach. It, it might work. It might work for the general populace, but for like a DC fan, it, it it's just an excuse and it's still going to be in the back of my mind. I hope. I hope they can prove me wrong. I hope they can move forward and continue with what they're doing because they finally are making some solid decisions. This is easily, gosh, I would have to give this a nine out of 10 if I had to give it any, any kind of rating at all. This is a great freaking movie. I felt I left this movie feeling great. I felt like I had fun. I felt like I had an emotional journey and connection with these characters. I, I, this movie is just, it hits all of the beats where, where it gets cheesy. It accepts that cheese because this movie is aware of what it is. It's, it's, it's something else. I, it's, I can't even explain it. Like it, it, it the third act DC has had a problem with third acts in almost every one of their movies, even their, some of their best, like Wonder Woman, it suffers at, at with this giant CGI mess of a third act. And the third act action climax is the weakest part of those films, all of them. Um, Aquaman, though, was just insane the entire movie. So the third act was just dialed to 11 from what we were already getting in that movie. So uh, it's, it, that's a kind of a weird place and Aquaman. It definitely worked. It, it went full Thor Ragnarok CGI crazy in that movie, 
This one is much more down to earth than that and much more grounded in the characters themselves. And it has a great payoff at the end, I think. I was wondering if they were going to go this route. They follow a lot of the current New 52 Jeff Johns run of uh, Shazam, giving it a lighter spin than what's in that version of the comics. Um, if you actually follow the DC animated films, this, that, that version on Shaz of Shazam is definitely what they were going for here with that blend of the troubled Billy with the childlike mind in the adult body. And it just, it's, it works. I'm done. I, I can't, I can't really add anything else to this. I've, I, I, I'm just talking circles at this point. Go see this movie. Seriously. You will not be disappointed and you will love it. You will have a great time. Go watch it. Check it out. And when you do, let me know what you think down in the comments below because I want to know. I want to talk to people about this movie. I want to know how different people react to it because who knows? Maybe I'm in an echo chamber and I'm just hearing what I want to hear. But all the people that I watch, even some people that I watch that review uh, movies and stuff like that who have not been a fan of the DC EU or most DC movies post Christopher Nolan have vehemently enjoyed this movie. So I don't know. I, I think it's legitimately an amazing film and I recommend everybody go see it. If, especially if you're a comic book fan, let me know what you think down in the comments below. That's it for this video much. And then we'll be on to a much more depressing topic as the second movie that I saw today was pet cemetery. And I've, I've got to gather my thoughts on that one, and I'll be back with another one of those. I'll catch you guys next time in the next video. You all take care.